I'm Tim Bradner. Welcome to Capital Views. Senator Kathy Giesel is with us. Welcome, Kathy. Thanks Capital for having Views. me, Tim. Um, Senator Giesel is a healthcare professional, and she is best known for work in resources in the Senate, but she has also done a lot of work in healthcare, innovations in uh, promoting innovations in healthcare, uh, uh, availability of, of medicines and resources, the cost. Uh, Kathy, I remember a couple, three years ago, there was a vaccine availability bill. Maybe you, it was pretty interesting. Maybe you could explain what, how it worked. Sure. Uh, you know, when Ted Stevens was serving us in the U.S. Senate, he got extra funds for the state of Alaska to fund a vaccine for children program. Well, when he left the Senate, the uh, Centers for Disease Control actually started lowering our uh, allotment of funds. And so the Vaccine for Children program began to go away. Well, it's an important program. Those vaccines prevent serious illnesses in children. And so I looked at ways that we might be able to replace that money. And we came up with a, an innovative plan. It's a public-private partnership. So the state of Alaska partnering with, partnering with insurance companies to pool our resources and get an economy of scale in bulk buying. The state of Alaska can buy vaccines in very large quantities. And we do so anyway, don't we? We do so anyway. And so with the insurance companies, they pony up the money up front for the year, estimating how many vaccines their insured population will require, and they put it all together with the state's money, and then we're able to supply those vaccines at much lower and even free cost. So uh, it essentially has replaced the program that Senator Stevens had provided for us and uh, is working quite well. Um, I don't have the data with me, but we're seeing great results, lots of vaccines being provided and, and disease being prevented. Is, are, the, <clears throat> are the vaccines supplied through, through uh, neighbor, nonprofit health facilities or just through through all Doctors clinics, or? through okay. all clinics. In fact, a let's say a um, a physician had their own practice, they could also buy into this program and get the vaccines at much lower or even free cost for certain uh, beneficiaries. Yeah, for their patients. Right. Yeah. So it's been very innovative. Um, we also passed a piece of legislation that allows pharmacists in neighborhood pharmacies to actually administer those vaccines to people that live in the neighborhood, stop by, want a vaccine. Um, there is a charge, of course, for it. But in the past, those pharmacists had to have a physician oversight actually co-signing on orders. But now those pharmacists are able to do it without that oversight. They certainly understand these medications and are very capable clinicians to do that. Are these only for children or for no, adults? No, for adults as well. In really? fact, I think a lot of citizens have seen and, and taken opportunity to get their flu shots at their local pharmacies. So when I go to my local grocery store and, and pharmacy and they're, they're selling, have you had your flu shot? This is what that is. This is what That's that is. That's interesting. Yes. Yeah. yeah. How many, uh, and how many different types of vaccines are, are, are done through oh this? Oh my, uh, all of the vaccines are offered through this program. Uh, the Department of Health, uh, the Public Health Division, has uh, managed to, to um, get all of the vaccines that, that adults and children would want. The part of the program included seniors, and the major pharmaceutical companies actually opposed that. They didn't want I, to be I selling. I remember that. Yes, I had quite a fight with Big Pharma over that because I wanted to include seniors in this. Um, but uh, the rest of the legislators agreed with me that it needed to cover the lifespan of, from children to seniors. Yeah, so why would, why would they oppose it for seniors? Um, I think it had to do with uh, the markup on those vaccines, as I recall. Yeah. Um, Interesting. Yeah. Yes, but we're, we were the first state to cover seniors. Uh, there were a couple other states that had put together this private-public partnership type plan but had not included seniors, so we were. That's interesting. You know, it, it shows that we, uh, we we can innovate and we can be the first to do things up here. And yes. I'm, I'm reminded also by the about the recent uh, uh, insurance program. The Division of Insurance got the reinsurance plan for 
individual health policy. That was very innovative. It was, so yes. Example. What is the, uh, there was something else with federal legislation for disabled children too? Yes, the ABLE Act, um, a better life experience, A-B-L-E, was a federal program that passed a couple years ago through Congress. And it allows families with members who, of their family who are disabled to actually create a savings account to cover those costs of things that are not covered by the disability benefits that their family member might have. So they can save $14,000 a year tax-free in what is called a 527 account. It's exactly like the college saving plan that families have often for their, their students. Um, but this allows them to save, and, and the maximum they can save is up to $100,000 over years at $14,000 a year. But it covers those extra things, those extra education programs or transportation mm -hmm. equipment that might not otherwise be covered. It's, it's a really beneficial program uh, for disabled folks. Yeah, I can see. The, um, um, you're going to be busy with health yes. legislation. You have a number of pharmacy bills in too, and we I can talk about that some other time, but it's the big, one of the um, ones which is difficult for me to understand is the, and maybe you could just take 10 or 15 seconds if you, if you could do it, and the, the pharmacy benefit manager bill. Yes, the uh, PBM bill. So pharmacy benefit managers are the middleman between you, the healthcare user, and your insurance company. And as middlemen, they take a big cut out of the money that's reimbursed to your pharmacy. There's a pharmacy here in Juneau that lost $10,000 over a three-month period because the PBM reimburses them below the cost for the medications that they are dispensing to us, the citizens. This has to change, and that's what this bill would do. Yeah. Well, we'll have to talk about that yes. next time we do this. All right. thank, thank you very much, Senator Giesel. This, I'm Tim Brander with Capital Views.